Hey Brewers, Paul here and we're looking at another Kegland product today. This is a ball lock liquid disconnect with duo tight fittings and flow control built in. So by just turning the top, you should be able to adjust the flow rate of your beverage out. So this would come in handy if let's say you're using a picnic tap like this. Your beer is usually sitting at 10, 12 PSI. It's coming out of here way too fast, lots of foam. You can fix that problem with one of these things. Or if your keg lines aren't balanced in your kegerator, if they're too short, a lot of times you're gonna get a lot of foam and rather than take everything apart, you could just put one of these on there. They're again, pretty inexpensive. I think we sell them for 12 Canadian dollars. So that's probably like eight bucks in the US, nine bucks, something like that. I've never used one. We literally just got them. I'm not even sure how it works. I'm pretty sure you adjust the flow by turning this thing on top, but I could be wrong. Uh, let's find out. So, have a barrier tubing into the duo tight, just push and pull, gotta love that. Right now I have 10 PSI on this keg. Hopefully this is all hooked up correctly and it won't spray beer everywhere. So far so good. And there's no beer coming out. Okay, so maybe it's because it's closed all the way. I will turn it counterclockwise. Sounds like something's happening. Let's try it out. A little bit of beer came out. Okay. Keep going. Okay, so there is no indication that I can find on which way to turn this thing to increase or decrease the flow. I just solved this problem for you. If it's all the way clockwise, it means it's shut off. And as you go counterclockwise, it'll open it up and allow for the beer to come through quicker. So let's just see here. I'm just hoping I won't keep turning, it'll just come right off. Okay. Okay, I'm getting a bit of resistance here, so I'm gonna just stop turning it. So that's full bore. I'm gonna, just for fun, turn the pressure up to 20 PSI. Now you don't have to be a genius to think that 20 PSI on about seven feet of tubing is gonna come out way too fast. So I'll just give it a second, make sure it's up to pressure here. Okay, that should be good. And yeah, that's looking pretty foamy, pretty fast. I'm gonna turn this clockwise. That's really easy. Then you could just adjust the flow until you weren't getting too much foam. Let's keep going. Let's say you had soda water or something like that on tap and you were hitting it with 60 PSI. Oh, I don't like going up that high. Makes me nervous. It shouldn't, there's no reason for it to. Okay. While this pressurizes, I'm gonna go and rinse this glass out. All right, 60 PSI. I have this all the way open, so it should just pretty much fly out of here. Oh no, I have it closed. What? Hold on. So now it should be closed. Nothing's coming out. Counterclockwise. I'm hearing some clicks. Nothing, still nothing. I'm not sure what's going on here. Still nothing, okay. Let's take this off. Hopefully not get beer all over the place. Okay. That came off way too easily. I think that was the problem is somehow it got unclamped. Come on. There we go. Okay, just a little bit of elbow grease. Okay, so let's open it all the way. Hopefully not get sprayed in the face full of beer. Oh, okay, so yeah, we're at 60 PSI. The picnic tap just can't handle that pressure. So let's turn that down real quick. <laughs> 
Yes, that is something that uh, has been brought to my attention before. These picnic taps, they're only good for, I don't know, like 20 PSI or something, or they will start to leak. So luckily, I was able to cut the flow off. It's mostly stopped. Let's see if I can get it stopped all the way. Yeah, there we go. Okay, no more leaking. Lots of foam. I'm gonna go and rinse this out again and be right back. Okay, clean glass. Let's just open this up a little bit. Hey, quit it. Okay, so maybe don't have soda water on a picnic tap would be uh, my advice. But uh, yeah, you can definitely step it down, closed. That would be about probably the pour you'd want out of it. I think the 60 PSI might have broke this thing, so I'm gonna quickly disconnect all this. <laughs> 60 PSI, picnic taps, no bueno, don't do it. Unless you're in a homebrew shop and can, you know, fix and if it gets messy, it's not a big deal. If you have foamy beer lines, don't stress. Just buy one of these things. They're cheap. You can fix your flow rate without having to buy new lines, take it all apart. If you have soda water on tap, want to step it down, because obviously 60 PSI, unless you have like, uh, I don't know, 80 feet of beer line, it'll just come flying out of your taps. The other thing that they claim is that these are uh, easy to clean and it looks like, again, we're gonna get some beer on the floor here, but it looks like they actually come apart. No tools required. There you go, you can take it all apart, take off your tubing, in theory. Sometimes this stuff comes out easy, sometimes it's hard. Soak this in some PBW or other cleaning solution. Get it nice and clean for your next time use. And uh, that's pretty much it to put it back together. Again, spraying beer all over the place. You're good to go, ready to go for another one. So that pretty much covers it. I mean, it's a pretty simple thing, but uh, probably the number one Number one or number two thing when it comes to kegging questions is, why is my beer foamy? That's usually in the lead with where did all my CO2 go because I didn't check for leaks properly. So anyway, we have another video for that. But yeah, foamy beer, soda, water, anything like that, this is an inexpensive way to deal with that sort of pressure to step it down and make it not foam. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. I try to answer every single one of them. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content.